Bitcoin. This is phenomenal news. You are going to want to see this, so make sure to stay tuned right to the very end of this video. Welcome back to the Crypto Bliss Show. I'm Kiara Rukas. Thank you for being here with me today, guys. I really do appreciate you. I have a lot to share with you. There is so much good news that you want to be knowing. So make sure to stay tuned and do not be fooled by anything else. A lot of YouTubers are out there saying that we are still bearish. Um, we will have a look and you will decide for yourself if we are still bearish or not at the end of this video. So uh, if you have not yet subscribed, you know what to do. Please go ahead and click that subscription bell. That would be truly appreciated, guys. We are beasting for you guys, doing some incredible things here. So I hope you have the most beautiful and insane day ahead. All right, guys. Happy Saturday to you all. The crypto Morales bubbles are pumping. Not one of them is okay. Well, Toncoin and Lido are slightly in the red today, guys. So, you know, we're seeing some huge green out there. Absolutely phenomenal. And uh, of course, we need to know that once it does move into green, we need to stay above in green. I mean, look at this coin here, it's pumping 620%. I don't even know what that is. I don't really care right now, but um, that's amazing. You know, this happens in crypto every single day. There is a crypto that is pumping like 100 to 2000 percent. OK, so today the cryptocurrency market cap is currently sitting at one point six. Eight two trillion dollars and the trading volume has fallen by about 35 billion again to about $65 billion. You can see that it's been up and down, up and down the trading volume. Bitcoin is, however, sitting up 4% for the last 24 hours and has reclaimed and erased the losses of last week, essentially. And we are now only down 0.1%, which is not bad considering what's kind of volatility we've seen this week. And Ethereum is up 2.4%. Ethereum still needs to claim itself back, guys. And um, make sure you guys hit that notification bell because I am going to be doing an Ethereum video for you over the course of today. So I hope you really, really get very, very excited because Ethereum has a lot of potential ahead of it. And um, we're probably going to see some super explosion, of course, especially considering that there is an ETF application for Ethereum happening at this moment. So BNB up 2.7% for Lana. Solana up 4.3, XRP up 3.2, Lido up 2.3, Cardano up 1.8, AVAX 4.1, Dogecoin 2%. So lots and lots and lots of good green percentages in the market, which has brought the Fear and Greed Index up um, now to about 55 from yesterday's 49. So we got back into greed from the neutral state. Guys, so many things have been happening, you know, after Bitcoin went over 41,000, after Grayscale sold $4 billion in Bitcoin, well, I dig the meme here uh, with Elon Musk smoking up the fat one. And uh, yeah, just, you know, at the end of the day, just absolutely loving the space, guys. If you are loving the space, then leave a thumbs up on the video, please. Uh, you know, the crypto space right now is doing amazing with the new Bitcoin ETFs have had $25 billion in trading volume in just the last 10 days. This is massive, guys. I don't know about you guys, but when you see $25 billion coming in and $4 billion being sold, then you want to know why Bitcoin is currently making a bit of a pump because the selling pressure is starting to die. Okay, it's starting to just die out. So I'd like to share this uh, little snippet here from Swan Media, where he explains the difference in fiat money to Bitcoin money. Let's listen out from uh, uh, Swan's Dante Cook. Okay. Only fitting that we go to the news about Bitwise, right? 
Bitwise became the first player in the ETF space and in the entire financial services industry to actually post its proof of reserves for everyone to see. Have you ever stopped to think that we've relied on all of our financial institutions who simply say, trust us, we have your assets? Do you really trust them? Do you? Taking a page out of a creature from Jekyll Island, the fractional reserve banking system has created the ultimate Ponzi scheme, allowing certain financial institutions the privilege to only hold up to one-tenth of your assets and reserves. This is one of the many reasons that holding real Bitcoin is incredibly powerful. While not trusting and verifying is something Bitcoiners have grown accustomed to, this move by Bitwise marks a significant milestone for Bitcoin and its ability to force the traditional financial system to evolve. It's definitely smart that Bitwise chose to be the first mover here. Other ETFs will likely be forced to follow suit, because why wouldn't they? If they don't post it, we'll assume they have something to hide. There's very little risk from publishing a public address that can already be found by anyone using Bitcoin's open public ledger. The paradox in Bitcoin is that, although it's a trustless system, trust actually increases dramatically because we can audit and verify the assets that are indeed where they are and are broadcasted to be. But you know what also increases dramatically? Trolling. Imagine trying to explain to your father-in-law that you can mathematically prove the existence of every penny's worth of Bitcoin in the ETF after dusting one of the largest institutional funds from your couch. You can't make this up. Meanwhile, the gold behind the ETFs that are out there being traded today are sitting in unaudited vaults. I'd love for our friend Peter Schiff to contrast this with gold or gold ETFs, where there's no way to actually verify the custodian central banks or countries have the gold that they say they have. Speaking of gold, for all the people who think that the government will be able to pull a Gold Reserve Act of 1933, all of the world's largest financial institutions, BlackRock, Fidelity, Franklin Templeton, Invesco, have made Bitcoin accessible to millions of investors with over 25 billion in holdings. This matters. According to Avik Roy, our Bitcoin friend in Washington, because it massively enlarges the special interest in favor of preserving and growing Bitcoin's role in U.S. financial markets. If you're a member of Congress or an ambitious regulator who dislikes Bitcoin and wants to enact some of the restrictive policies described like the 1933 Gold Reserve Act, you're not merely going to hear from hodling plebs but from major financial players who, like it or not, have considerable influence in Washington. So as you heard here from Dante Cook, you know, at the end of the day, the government can continue to print as much fiat money as they want. Bitcoin is here to stay. It's not going to go anywhere. The largest institutions who have and control all the assets in the world, okay, just by the way, all launched a Bitcoin ETF at the same time, okay, which is now in the palm of their hands to have access to control. I just want to let you know, from the one hand, of course, we know that that's not a good thing. And you guys will figure that out for yourself. And if you want me to do a video on why it would be bad, well, then let me know down in the comments below. On the other hand, we have an absolutely phenomenal time ahead because to some degree, they will certainly and absolutely protect it because they have worked so hard to get it. And they will make money from it as long as it continues to be around and exist. So, guys, don't believe that these assets are going to go anywhere. And I'm not just talking about Bitcoin, okay? I'm talking about ETH has got a spot ETF um, uh, applic applications busy going through. And I have no doubt some of the other layer ones will get that too at some point over the rest of this year and 2025 and going forward. So... So many more will get ETFs too. And maybe then there'll be an ETF bundle like on one of my accounts, Easy Equities is a South African account. That's where it is a bundle and it's called the EC10 and it's the top 10 cryptocurrencies that shift in and out. Very similar to what this is here in terms of the top 10 on this side of um, things. So it's a very interesting crypto. All right, guys. Let's move on here. So basically, as you guys can see here, we are So one of the coolest things that um, is busy happening is that today is the 27th of January. On Monday, which is the 29th of January, 
we are expected to see Google to start allowing Bitcoin ETF ads. Okay, this is happening whether you like it or not. And this can happen for all cryptocurrencies, essentially. So now marketing crypto is about to become internationally legal. Okay, this is massive for Bitcoin. This is where the adoption starts to take place. This is where people start to pour in. So if you have not yet bought yourself any crypto, use my links down pinned in the comments below for you. My Bybit link will get you up to $30,000 deposit bonus. My Bitflex link will give you up to uh, $68,888 bonus. So guys, if I were you, I would not be sitting for one moment without getting some crypto, especially Bitcoin. Okay, breaking. The US is going to sell about $130 million from Silk Road seizure. They've put that through. They're going to sell about $130 million worth. Obviously, that's probably to try and recoup and claim back some costs. But the US government costs from going through the cases, etc. Guys, the US government are not a bunch of idiots okay although we sometimes like to see them as idiots call them idiots whatever they are not idiots they are quite smart they're not going to sell all of that bitcoin the u.s government owns about two hundred thousand bitcoin okay that is currently more than all nine of the etf applicants together okay just to give you some perspective but make no mistake that these nine etf applicants are going to zoom past the amount of holdings that the US and the Chinese governments hold. And if you guys did not watch my video here, guys, it'll change your life. These two videos, my goodness me, it'll change your life. If you missed it, go watch it. Okay. Very, very important video. Now, if you guys can't see that currently we're about to experience inflows of money, and I'm going to talk about that throughout the rest of this video going forward is how Bitcoin halving is now less than three months away. And there will certainly and undoubtedly be a new all time high without a doubt. History has shown us not to say that it will always be the same, but it has the potential to become the same. So the halving, the first halving got us up to $12 from pretty much $0. The second half, uh, sorry, the second half, the first halving was at $12. The second halving is at $675. The third halving was at $97,060. Uh, uh, sorry, $9,760. What is the fourth halving price going to be at? Well, you know, Bitcoin is charging its way into another realm. I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. If you are, please smash a thumbs up on the video all right guys we are about to be speaking about the m2 supply so here is an example for every billion dollar increase in the m2 money supply the btc price is expected to increase by approximately 1.37 dollars intercept 100.53 theoretically this is expected BTC when price of M, uh, when the M2 money supply is zero, a scenario more hypothetical than practical. Well, I doubt it because it is somewhat practical and I'll show you why. So the M2 and Bitcoin connection unraveling the ties between money supply and digital gold. So the independent, the M2 money supply independent variable represents the amount of money circulating within the economy the whole world's economy, including cash, checking deposits, and easily convertible near money M2 supply um, uh, is broad indicator of the monetary base. Now, Bitcoin has a dependent variable, uh, is a dependent variable. As the flagship of cryptocurrencies, BTC's price serves as a bellwether for the crypto market its value is influenced by a myriad of factors from investor sentiment to regulatory changes. Yes, but once all of that is passed, we will see absolute wonderful and tremendous gains in Bitcoin. So 
the US M2 money supply, as you can see, is an inverse correlation, okay, because there's more than 21.7 trillion. Guys, this was in 2022. I just want to show you something. In 2022, it was 21.7. Today, we're currently sitting at 34.1. Why do you think Bitcoin is actually sitting at the prices that it's sitting at? Well, because it's an inverse correlation, okay? The Bitcoin money supply from 2009 to 2140 literally goes uh, stable. There will never be any more ever. So the value of Bitcoin will increase because they are being printed. The dollars are being printed. And if you don't consider what I'm saying to you and the information that I'm giving you relevant and valuable, well, then listen to somebody like Raul Powell. Raul Powell says that the rising M2 money supply will see crypto become super massive black hole. Historically, the cryptocurrency market has benefited from the rise in global money supply as a majority of the bull runs in the past coincided with the rise in fiat supply. So, very simply, I'll show you the charts. This is glow. The, the white line is Bitcoin year on year. And... Uh, the blue line is M2 year on year. Look how absolutely correlated it is. And since there has been money that has been sucked out of the system, out of the dollars, you know, we have seen a crash. Are we about to see a major, major rally? Are we about to see more increase in M2? Or are we about to see a further decrease? Well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But the money printers are already on. They have been on for a long time. This has gone up by about $5 trillion in, in the kind of halfway. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think by the end of 2020, I mean, they've added like six to seven, maybe $8 trillion into the market through printing money. Guys, this is mad. Like, they're just eroding your value of dollars, okay? If you're holding dollars, just by the way. So I don't hold dollars. As much as I'd like to earn money in dollars, that's different to holding it and saving uh, and restoring its value. That's where I would absolutely be with Bitcoin 100% of the way. And that's why I have invested in Bitcoin. I don't just run my channel for shits and giggles, guys. I actually run my channel because I'm showing you all of the things that I'm investing in, how much I'm investing, what it is that I'm investing, where I'm investing, what prices I'll look to buy or dollar cost average, so on and so forth. And honestly, there is so much value in the crypto space. Okay. This is where you need to see this, that ever since the, um, so M2 money supplies this and Bitcoin is the, the black line look at where we have literally increased okay we have come out of that space here tremendously so we're kind of at the limit once again the debt ceiling limit in the in america once again but didn't they announce that there won't be a ceiling any longer which means that this can literally just become infinite in its printable um equation and this is why i would suggest to you not being concerned with what others have to say about Bitcoin. Because if they don't know anything about Bitcoin, they're just going to FUD it nonstop, guys. Bitcoin has literally gone all the way from down there, all the way up to the whole time highs of $70,000. An asset like this is not going to come down, guys. It's just going to continue to grow. And that is when I'm telling you to look from a long-term perspective. Don't worry about intraday, uh, intraday volatility and you know pullbacks where we should have bear markets. These are normal pullbacks. Look at the pullback. Look at the pullback. Look at the pullback on the way up. Super simple, guys. Now you can see here that this is the M2 growth of the Fed, the ECB, the PBOC, and the BOJ year on year. It is increasing. Bitcoin is increasing. Okay. And look at when we had um, the money supply decrease. We had the bear markets. Literally, guys, that was the reason for the bear markets because 
money got pulled out of the system and put back into dollars. That's what it was. Um, so now you can see we started to come out again. And this was the worst pull of money, uh, pulling of money back in out of the system, back into dollars uh, that we have seen. So I do believe that we are about to see some of the most catapulting um, uh, shoots in the Bitcoin uh, price. Now, one of the coolest things about Bitcoin in the crypto space, because you hear all of the fight and the noise. And that's why I say just ignore the noise, because if you actually do your own research and you look at the data and not the noise or the news, newsy noise, noisy news, okay, total uh, value of crypto stolen from DeFi platforms in 23 plummets by 63.7% year on year. Guys, that is mad. In other words, the amount of security risks that are currently happening in crypto reduced by 63.7%. That is massive. Okay. And you guys are going to have a laugh with what I'm about to show you. So make sure to stay tuned because it's going to be quite fun. But over here, you can see here, basically, the number of DeFi hacks also declined seven. So, sorry. Um, in a new report, chain analysis note that hackers stole 1.1 billion from DeFi protocols in 2023, down from 2.5 billion in 21 and 3.1 billion in 22. So in 21, it was low, then it increased in 22. Okay. Now I got into the market at about 20, where are we? 21. I got into the market just before 21 in kind of the 2020, 21 New Year's time. That's when I got into the market, 2nd of January, 21. Okay. 2.5 billion got stolen. I had a few thousand dollars stolen from me from scams. Then in 22, it increased. Then in 23, it went down to $1.1 billion. Guys, ha. if you guys don't think that the security uh, and oracles and the crypto space and the technology that is coming to the crypto space is improving day for day, guys, you are just missing out on the world's biggest evolution. Okay. If you think that AI is huge, well, imagine AI in crypto and what is going on. Okay. Now, which brings me to the American dollars. How much did, how many dollars were people around the world scammed out of over the course of the lifetime of the dollar? Well, this shit is going to make you guys realize that the real scam is actually the dollar. And more people would prefer to do scams in dollars because it is just a whole lot easier to do scams in dollars rather than in crypto because crypto is traceable. It has security features, all kinds of stuff. Well, this is from 12th of October 23. Americans lose billions to social media scams. Americans lost 2.7 billion scams originating from social media between 21 and uh, uh, June 23. However, how much money is lost in scams worldwide? 1.4 trillion dollars lost to scams globally. Spore victims lost the most on average. Study Lisbon scammers stole an estimated 1.02 trillion dollars. Okay. Um, globally between August 22 and August 23, with victims in Singapore losing the most amount of money on average. Okay, guys, if you believe that we are not, I mean, just to give you an example, $1.4 trillion is just about the total amount of the entire cryptocurrency market caps. So this is a little bit over that. So <laughs> crypto is not a scam. Do your own research. This is a scam. They have $34 trillion that they have stolen from you. Okay. You and your future children and future generations of the human population. Okay. 
So if you want to finger wag to anybody, these are the people to finger wag to. And you guys need to know that they don't give rocks about you. All they care about is printing more money so that they can save their dollar and save the nation. But instead, they will crush other people and other nations to get that, to achieve that goal. And this is why war starts and war begins, because one side doesn't allow the other side to breathe, to let go. And I'm not saying that the US dollar or America is the only reason for this happening. China's part of it. Even my own country, South Africa, is part of it. Okay. Uh, you must see how South African government chokes the daylight out of um, its people, guys. I mean, the South African government extorts billions of dollars from taxpayers every single year. And I must say, South Africa is a very beautiful country. But this happens all over the world. It's not just the dollar. It's the total global effect of this. And that's why it's the loss to scams globally, not just America. So just realize something that Bitcoin is here to stay. It's going to be here forever. This is safer. There are only 21 million of them. And some of them have been lost, just by the way, because how many? 19.6 are in circulation. Okay, million are in circulation. So where are the other kind of 1.4 million Bitcoin? Gone. Gone. Gone, guys. Don't know about you, but I would definitely not want to be losing out on any of this stuff. Okay, let's go and have a quick squiz at my Bitcoin trade and see what's going on in the chart. My XRP trade as well. I did tell you guys I had an XRP trade. I took a $5 trade on the XRP trade, super simple. My Bitcoin trade pumped into volume yesterday. And because the charts are now making a move to the upside, we are seeing some incredible um, profits and gains in my trade. So let's go and have a look at that. And then we will finally finish off the video. So truly, thank you guys for being here with me today on the Crypto Bliss Show. I truly appreciate you. Um, you guys are absolutely wonderful and magnificent. and Hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you have, show some love with a thumbs up and a sub subscribing. Hit that notification bell because I have some pretty cool content coming out for you guys over the next uh, day and two. So currently, I am up 30% in my trade right now. And you can see it's a 15x trade. And um, you can see here that that was my entry level. We had a pump out of here. We actually broke out of this down sloping resistance. So I wouldn't be surprised if we came back down to the 40,000 level once again, where it broke out of, to kind of retest uh, that area in support. Now, why do I say that? Well, look at the RSI um, happening here. The volume is slowing down. I wouldn't be surprised if it kind of just bounced off here and skimmed up. I would like to see another move on Bitcoin, however, guys. I would like to say that we are very likely going to see, end up probably seeing a, a move like this, okay, rather, okay, than kind of down there again. I don't think we're going to come down. In fact, I don't think we're even going to break this box again. So, you know, that's my personal view. I'd like to know what you guys think, but I'm just going to share that with you because right now, even though we have, the monthly candle going to close next week, Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, we also have the weekly candle closing over the course of this weekend, of course, tomorrow. And um, sorry, I said the monthly candle, the monthly candle. Look at where this weekly candle currently is. Now, normally this is actually a very, very, very bearish candle. Okay, however, what I would like to say is that if we do start to kind of pull into the green and close above that 42,000 level, guys, I actually think that we may end up just going up. We may end up starting to push up because this was buy pressure, buy pressure, buy pressure. We've remained above my green box the entire time. So hopefully we can remain above my uh, purple box, sorry and stay there. Now, my XRP trade uh, also uh, is up 23%. You guys can see, I do have my potential take profits at around to get back up here by the 200, which is at about 60. So 
That's where I will be taking profit. And why I'm going to do that is because we've got a lot of resistance and Bitcoin will essentially look like the same. I think we're going to have a candle that first gets us up to uh, kind of the 44, 45K level, um, pushing us back up to this upward sloping uh, end of the channel. So let me know what you guys think down below. But I've had fun in this video. It's time to leave. Love you all. We'll check you on the next one. Stay blessed.